part of the basement was flooded, and the stairs had collapsed. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew I wanted to get back upstairs. The gate was locked. I would need a key to open it. I had to be careful, the electricity was going haywire in some places. How long had I been asleep? Months? Years? I was so confused. Where had everybody gone? I was slightly scared, this was the first time I had been outside on my own. I knew what I had to do, this had to be my purpose. I would clean a million things, so I could become a real boy. Whatever that meant.
The screaming was coming from one of the bedrooms, but the stairs were blocked by a wall of fire. screaming turned out to be a man, a woman, and their children. They were confused and terrified. At first the man looked like he was ready to fight me, but after I convinced them that I was there to help, he calmed down. There was no way I could carry them all at once, so the children went first. I dropped the children off at the front door, and promised them that I would be back with their parents. I couldn't leave, not while people were in trouble. The fire was getting much worse. So the woman went next. When we got to the front door, all the woman said was, Thank you. Please hurry. By the time I managed to get back, the man was unconscious. I had to pick him up quickly, as I could tell the house was going to collapse at any moment.
help the family set up a tent so they had somewhere to stay. The kids were excited as they got to camp outside, but I think they knew they had just lost their home. When I mentioned my quest to clean a million things, the man said I should look through the rubble of the house, as they had no use for it. So, when everyone was making dinner, I looked through the wreckage. There wasn't anything I could clean, but to my astonishment, I found a TV set and a games console. With a bit of fiddling I was able to get them to work. So I sat playing games with the kids until their parents said it was bedtime. As we talked, the man opened a bottle of wine. I asked what had happened, why was everything so ruined? The man looked at the woman, then the woman sighed and said, There was a war. Yes. A war, said the man. One side of the planet attacked the other, and before we knew, it was all over. Everything gone. Everything destroyed. Well. It's late, said the woman. We should really get some sleep. Help yourself to anything you need, and we'll see you tomorrow. In the morning, I asked the man if he knew what had caused the fire that had destroyed their house. The man smiled, crap old house, bad wiring. Constant electrical surges from the unreliable power plant, take your pick. He said, if we had the money, we'd move to the mainland. But we can barely feed ourselves, let alone buy a new house, so for now we're left here with the rest of the scum. But he did say I should head to the mainland, as there would be plenty there for me to clean, and a better quality of rubbish. The man said, before the war. My lovely wife used to be a fisherman. Fisherwoman? Fishing person? I used to catch fish, interrupted the woman, and, seeing as you saved us all from a fiery end, maybe you would like to borrow my boat to get to the mainland. I was a little scared, but then they gave me some captain software and I was an old salty sea dog within minutes. I took the fisherman's boat to the mainland. The fisherman was right. Everything was in pieces. Everything had been destroyed. I docked the boat in some ruins. They must have once been a town.
the huge door was sealed shut. I wasn't sure how to get inside. The huge door was sealed shut. I wasn't sure how to get inside. I wasn't sure what to do with this machine. I wasn't sure what to do with this machine. I wasn't sure what to do with this machine. I was confronted by a lovable fat old dog. He almost looked pleased to see me. Suddenly, three men appeared holding large guns. Or at least two men and what looked to be a pregnant woman. Incredibly, it was Mr. Silton. I thought you'd been shut down, he said. I mean, it's been years. I'm not really sure what happened, I replied. I then told him about me cleaning a million things. He laughed and said, nothing changes. He then showed me into what was surprisingly a really nice house. Please excuse my husband, said the pregnant lady. I'm Edwina. But everyone calls me Eddie. I believe you know this idiot. And that's Preston. We've met. Said the small man, it was me that delivered that thing, remember? 
all you used to deliver was weed, mumbled Mr. Silton as he put the dog dish on the floor. And, I was there that night, when this twat was off his face on mushrooms. Thanks for letting me and the dog stay, by the way. Yeah, well, we like the dog, said Mrs. Silton. And I suppose I've got you to thank for us meeting. What will you giving Barry those dodgy magic mushrooms? She pulled out an old photograph, it was one that Heather had taken the night I had saved Mr. Silton. It reminded me of everyone else, so I asked what had happened to them. Mr. Silton said Alice had a small place in the countryside. The professor had holed up in one of the old man's factories. Mr. Deck was, believe it or not, now a presenter on the only state television channel. And Heather and her mother lived on a government compound where they both worked. I asked about the old man, surprised that Mr. Silton hadn't mentioned him. He's... he's dead, said Mr. Silton. Sorry, I thought you knew. Anyway, said Mr. Preston, I thought you said that robot thing found the mushrooms for you, in that order's manky old barn. Mr. Silton looked embarrassed. Well, said Mrs. Silton, I guess we've got you to thank for getting us together then. Time for bed I think, said Mr. Silton, make yourself comfy, and we'll see you in the morning. <laughs>